Welcome! Uh, welcome to your festival. Uh, this is Up Your Festival. <laughs> uh, my name's Mark Little. G'day at home. Uh, a bit of a ring in. A bit of a ring because, you know, I, know, I come from another country. It's not, a, it's not because um, Scottish people can't do this job. I want to say that. It's not because of that. It's because they're not sure if anyone's watching it tonight and they didn't want to waste it. <laughs> they didn't want to waste anyone because apparently the satellite's not quite um, sort of right yet and they think there's only a sort of a Papua New Guinea family <laughs> watching it on their fridge. Ah, uh, look at the set, isn't this great? Can I come back here, is that okay? Oh, this is marvellous. Is this Macbeth Tartan? Is this Macbeth? I can see why it went out of fashion, this Macbeth Tartan, because it's sort of all stiff if you wear a kilt like that. Oh, it's great, these festivals. The main thing about festivals is, like you've got the international, this festival, well, I, it's ice, it's like, uh huh. <laughs> it's the fact that, like, you've got the, the international festivals, like, sort of caters to the mainstream. And we've got the Fringe Festival. To a cracking which start to the with the traditional parade, led this year by the Queen's own alarm clock. But it's not all pomp and pageantry. Here now are the Sellafield Amateur Dramatic Society. But it's back to the parade on the march past to the Mass Julian Clary's. And the Bolshoi Opera arrive in the new two horsepower Skoda convertible. And don't they love it? And here's the latest man to be charged with the Birmingham pub bombing. But who's this? Yes, it's the only way they'd let Mike Smith arrive with his helicopter. The great thing about the festival is that wherever you look, there's a well-known face. Here's the star of the Sam Smith's Yorkshire Bitter commercials, publicising his one-horse show. Oh, and there's a prat dressed as a fairy. Well, it doesn't matter that it's crap, it's for charity. And one of the most popular acts in the festival, the rabbit that made Paul Daniels disappear. And finally, good to see the RAF as they set off to bolster the American forces massing in Saudi Arabia. So watch out, Saddam, as we say good luck, chaps, and goodbye. I noticed the, uh, the Iraqi uh, uh, sort of precision motorcycle team is not here this year. Oh, it's a little bit of a shame for you people hanging out about any neighbours stuff, I'm not going to say much. Although later on I'll give you a full rundown of what's going to happen in the next 18 months. <laughs> From Bouncer's horrible death to Jim's sex change. <laughs> But let's get stuck into this entertainment. We've got this group on now. They're from Australia as well. They're called the Como String Quartet and they're going to do for you Bolero. Let's do it. Yo! Yo.
walk around. There they were. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, it makes you wish you were like four blokes, doesn't it? Hello there. You've, you've, you've got your dish worked out, and here we are now. This festival, like, there's only one thing worse at this festival for mine is than, like, seeing crappy shows, and that's having to go out after and listen to all the crap people are talking <laughs> in the pub afterwards. <laughs> Great to see you, Shirley. Great to see you, Shirley. Mwah, mwah. Oh. Been to the festival before? Me? Oh, millions of times, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, zillions mm. of times. When did you get here? Oh, I'll just check on my Colombian moon watch. Wow. Uh, today's Monday. I got here in May. May? <laughs> was there much to see then? No, not really, but the bus station was just so great. You must go see it. Bus station, right, chill. Oh, so much to keep you busy. What about Romeo and Juliet? Oh, I put them in a nursery for three weeks. No, I meant the show. Did you see it? Oh, no, no, too busy, too busy. But I saw the poster on a wall mm. in Princess Street. It's just great. Check it out. Poster? Right. Oh, what about those guys outside the assembly room? Oh, all those leaflets. Oh, no. I only bought a few. Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. Um, I'm thinking of seeing some shows as well. Yeah? Mm. Radical. Mm. I'd love to, but it's so difficult to decide. Hey, don't bother. I know what you should take in. Yeah? Yeah. So status. <laughs> You're sure this is a show, are you sure? Yeah, check out the leaflet. So status is a nuisance and gives you a pain in the bladder. Yeah. Is that what it says there? Mm. I'm surprised. It's not what it says. You've got a great write-up in the Scotsman. Mm. <gasps> oh, God, I've got a split. Um, I'm thinking of drinking all evening in the assembly room's bar. Yeah? Mm. You should read this, then. Hey, Shirley, I can't, OK? I've got so many media people to meet, yeah, right? Yeah, Shirley, I nearly forgot. Mm. I'll have a cup of decaf and a toasted tea cake. Decaf and toasted tea cake. Pronto. <clears throat> I'll go get back. No, I disagree, mate. I, dis I think Romeo and Juliet would be a better play if, uh, if like, he killed someone or more yeah. people. He should kill more, like Macbeth did. That was, now, that was a good play. Oh, good day. I was just talking about Macbeth and Romeo. I didn't kill enough people, and that's why it might be going down. Oh, look, we'll get stuck into it. We've got more entertainment. There's more stuff on the VTR. I'd like to introduce this another coot. He's another Australian coot. And uh, let's go to him. He's called Bob Dan. Yep, that looks okay. Hi, swingers. Bob Down here. I'm a regional Australian TV star, can't you tell? And I finally found a TV station that has even less viewers than the one back home. Oh, me kidding. Here we are at the Fringe Press Lodge. This is a very interesting occasion as part of the Festival Fringe. All of the, uh, the press people mill around a room and they've got blue dots. And all of the desperate, sad, lonely cabaret clowns that have spent all their money to come up to do the Fringe, they wear orange dots and they try and hassle the press people to give them coverage. Of course, as you can see, my uh, star is a quite a different thing. I've got a white star. I have my very own classification which basically means, piss off, asshole. Uh, you'll get talked to when you're spoken to. Bye. <laughs> I don't believe it. Clive Anderson's here. Yeah, the unbelievable Clive. Get out of my way, guys. Excuse me. I'll talk to you. Oh, you're a media as well. Simon Fanshawe. Oh, darling. Bob <laughs> Dane. It's been almost a Hi. year. I'd love it? to talk to you, Simon, but I've just got to go to Clive Anderson. I'll be I back. Can you just hang quiet? I will. I will. It's actually happening. Clive is actually seems to be, he seems to have got the go-ahead for another series. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Hi, what are you doing? Hello, my name's Nigel Nice, and I'm the game show host for. I'm crashing into your climb. Hi, Bob Down. I'm as almost as famous as you are in Australia. Is that hard to believe? Hello, Australia. Hi, Clive. Yes, yes. I'll just shake your microphone. Thanks a lot. I just wanted to crash in on your. So you have got another series? thought after coming into this uh, particular hall, but right. uh, I well, think best of luck. Hang on, Thank I'm, you. best of luck with the demo. Look at, this, look at the size of my mic. That's right. <laughs> the size is important. My name's Nigel Nice, and I'm uh, doing a show called The Golden Key at Hill Street Theatre. It's a comedy musical, one episode of a game show set to music. Oh, somebody take the batteries out. Thank you, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> And are you from Australia? Yeah, I'm completely nice. disinterested in watching. Oh, thank you very much, guys. It's nice. It's always handy to do the makeup. Thank you. Clive, Clive's getting very angry. I think he wants us to piss off.
That reminds me like that, uh, like Beyond Comedy Dome. Mel Gibson is Funny Max. He's back and he's funny. Beyond, we're like in a cage. They're keeping us here. A lot of things, I've said so much here, but the one thing that is truly like, well, turns you off really, turns me off a bit, is like the art of improvisation. Right? Now, it's said to be one of the most challenging theatrical genres, genres, <laughs> genres, that a performer can take on, right? Now, perhaps, because it's so hard, that's why it's such shit. <laughs> now, as we're about to find out, please welcome BSB's own Impro team. Here we go. Impro extraordinaire. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, welcome to the uh, Drama Graduates Workshop Improv Now Collective. Yeah, we're going to be uh, throwing some ideas at you. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're going to be working with you, through you, around you, about ten feet in front of you. Yeah, shut up, Chris. Um, yeah, okay, um, okay, right. Back. Right, uh, this is our stage. Our uh, bodies are our tools. And our tools are... Uh... Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> moving on. Uh, it's a totally improvised show. There are absolutely no plants in the audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, apart from that one, uh, obviously, <laughs> there's always one. Yeah, and we're up here because we believe that you, the audience, should be involved in the creative process. It's yeah. not because we couldn't get on whose line is it anyway. I yeah. mean, you right. know, it's, uh, just... Well, uh, moving on. Uh, what we need now is a style. Uh, famous author. Uh, absolutely anyone you like. Gabriel Garcia Marquez. <laughs> Didn't he play on the right with Scalacci? Yeah, yeah. yeah. any more suggestions? Yeah, more suggestions. Joyce. What, you for Joyce? Becky. Becky. Beckett. 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 Yeah, I did actually mean to read some Beckett, but my class did uh, Brighton Rock for O level, oh, so. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, what we really need is something a bit more uh, Enid Blyton y. Blyton esque. Yeah. Echo. Enid Blyton, great, yeah, great. <laughs> great. Uh, okay, right, now what we need is a, 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 a last line, something to end the sketch with. Two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. <laughs> <laughs> great, we're really great, cooking, we're really great. cooking. Two pints of lager, a packet of crisps. Right, now we need a situation, maybe like a guy hailing a cab, something like that. Iraq invading Kuwait. <laughs> wow. <Right. laughs> Heavy. Political. <laughs> right. Chris. What? <laughs> oh, uh, uh. Come on, Timmy! Let's invade QAs! Okay, George! <laughs> uh, <laughs> just the two of us! <laughs> I wonder if we'll meet anyone on the way. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think we will! <laughs> What? Why don't we take some refreshments? Yeah, a couple of drinks and maybe a light snack. What do you say, George? Oh, yes. Two bottles of ginger beer and a packet of peanuts. <laughs> yeah, or maybe we could go to the pub and order something from the bar. What, like a plowman's, you mean? What? <laughs> uh, Timmy? Timmy, what was the name of that place that you went to in Kuwait? Oh, two pints of lager and a packet of crisps, please. Yes! yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, we shoot those sort of people in Australia now. Instead of kangaroos, we, 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 we run after them. Look, let's get stuck in some real entertainment now. Let's get down. There's a little suburb of Australia called America. <laughs> like to introduce this guy from there to you and to you. Here he is, Dana Gould. Let's make him welcome. <laughs> The thing I've noticed about being at the festival first is seeing the different acts. I find the, uh, I find the American comics to be a little uh, smoother than the, uh, the ones from Europe. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hi! Okay. When, you, when, when you do comedy, people, when they speak to you, they automatically assume that you're kind of crazy just because you do it. I think everybody's a little off, you know. Everybody has that one neurotic friend, you know. What time is it? I'm not gay! <laughs> <laughs> it does take a certain lack of stature. Where I'm from in America is near where the Kennedys are from. I can't imagine a man like John F. Kennedy having a bad career teacher in school, ending up some nightclub comic. Wouldn't that have been great? 1962, you walk into some smoky bar. There's a six-foot guy with red hair up on stage. 
Man goes to a party. <laughs> he forgets his wallet there. He goes back the next day to claim it. The host says to him, How did you recall my address? The man says, I recalled a red front door and a gold toilet seat. The host says, I have no gold toilet seat, but you're the man who pooped in my tuba. <laughs> yes. As I am from that part of the country, I know of no one that speaks with that accent. It's just that one family. Even his babies are like, break up the year, But I respect the president. Even if you disagree with what they do, you have to respect the PM or the president. If only for the stress of that job. Realize the pressure involved? It's unbelievable, but they always seem so calm. They always have their act together. I'd love to see one just flip out and snap. Wouldn't that be great? In the middle of a press conference, have Bush lose it completely? Actually, now? <laughs> Glad you brought that up at this juncture in time. Answer this question here. I think now is the time for all Americans pull together as one people and uh, get, 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 get these spiders off me. I want to be a woman. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Well, they hide them during the elections. You can elect a lunatic, not even know it till they swear them in. You know. I swear to uphold the constitution of this fine nation. Me too, we're very excited. Yeah. <laughs> mommy, mommy, get back in that pocket. You said I could talk. No, no, you said I could talk. He makes me touch him. He makes me touch him. Get... <laughs> There's a lot of instability in my family. The only person I'm related to in my family that I have anything in common with is my grandfather, and he's completely senile. We always look forward to his Christmas presents. <laughs> look what Grandpa gave me, Mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Put air in that thing and it's a woman. <laughs> the kids could use it around the swimming pool. <laughs> well, that's all for me. Thanks very much. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Where many world famous performers began their careers as students performing on the fringe, I've read. Now, this week, our roving reporter, David Cliche, is following a student company up here for the first time. Edinburgh, a city created in dreams and built on hills. Every year, literally 417,000 people undertake the pilgrimage from all over the world to participate in the cultural cornucopia they call Edinburgh the city known as the Glasgow of the North. <laughs> Ever since, Ivan the Terrible invaded in 1362 and tormented the local residents with satirical observations on the religious leaders of the day. Performers have been coming from as far afield as Dalkeith to bring joy to the hearts of the people of the city they call Edinburgh. This is Brian and Penny. They have arrived today from the Bournemouth University Media Society to perform at the Edinburgh Fringe. We shall be following their progress throughout the festival. Come see our show. It's really good. Last night the Fox came to the Fox and said, Yeah, it's really good. Come see our show. Armed with a grant of £75 from their student union, Penny and Brian are hoping to take the festival by storm. Penny, what are your plans? Uh, we're doing two shows. Yeah, yeah, can I see it? It's really, really good. Um, in the afternoon, we're doing a modern play which we wrote. Well, could you tell us a bit about it, please? It's, it's a problem play about Britain and the world, seen through the eyes of a, an Irish teenager who's unemployed, who's come down to Bournemouth to try and get work. And what's it called? It's called Girl Are you doing any other shows? Well, um, yes. yes. At 10.15, we're doing a review sketchy type show, which is really, really funny. Yeah. Uh, we were playing a revival of uh, Stephen Burkhoff's Lunch. Yeah. But uh, the three other companies doing that in our venue alone. Yes. So, um, anyway, it's called um, Bums. Yes, Bournemouth University Media Students. I understand. Very funny. What hope is there for these young, happy, enthusiastic people as they come to the Edinburgh? Fringe. We will be following their fortunes throughout the festival. David Cliche, up your festival, Glasgow. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. The last live television show I was on was in Australia. I was sacked from that. <laughs> so I'd like to thank BSB for having me. This is the end of the thing about half an hour. It only takes 30 minutes. It's all over. Let's have the comos. Thank you. Good night. Yo! <laughs>